welcome to Wednesday of Holy Week here in 2021. Each day in our growing deeper daily devotion, we are making our journey towards the cross of Good Friday. And here on Wednesday, we see this unique scene popping up. We're going to look at Matthew's account of it in Matthew chapter 26. We see Jesus being anointed with expensive perfume. And as well, Jesus being betrayed by his disciple. This juxtaposition of great adoration and thanks and appreciation for Jesus and this great act of betrayal and evil. These are the events of Wednesday. At the beginning of chapter 26, we see that the chief priests and the elders have now made it their mission to take care of this uprising and this new leader that has come on the scene in Jesus. And you could see why they would have gotten there. On the Monday and Tuesday of Holy Week, Jesus has been intensifying his attack, his debates with the religious leaders of that day. Remember, he curses the fig tree and he overturns the tables on Holy Monday. And on Tuesday, he goes and debates with the leaders in the temple. And then at the Mount of Olives, he gives the discourse of the end times and the judgment that to come and the hope of the coming Son of Man. In chapter 23, he as well calls out the leaders and casts upon them woes for the way that they've been acting and leading. You can see why in the beginning of chapter 26, why they plot to kill Jesus. And so into this, we see these two stories then next occur on this Wednesday, the anointing of Jesus and as well his betrayal. This is Matthew 26, starting in verse 6. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then, one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Amazing, the events of the Wednesday of Holy Week. On one hand, we see this woman in this act of pure love and devotion to Jesus, taking this alabaster flask, opening it, and pouring this special anointing oil on Jesus. It would have been oil that was set apart for solemn acts of love and devotion. It would have been expensive. It would have brought about a very rich smelling fragrance in the room that got the attention of all those that were there. And the disciples then use this as a moment to spiritualize things. Ah, we could have sold that. It could have been used for, for money for the poor. And uh, we really don't see the heart's intentions of the disciples here, but it does kind of go beneath the surface some, doesn't it? It relays to them that in the moment they see the act of devotion and they're acting spiritual as if they truly care that this money could have been used for the poor. And Jesus gives them this lesson that the poor will always be among you, but not me. What she has done is more than just this act of devotion. It's a beautiful thing. She's prepared me for what's up ahead. She has prepared me for my burial. She has prepared me for what is going to happen. You'll always have the poor among you. You won't always have me. We see in this woman's act, giving of this expensive ointment, set apart for special moments, recognizing the beauty of Jesus in her midst. And she devoted her all. She anointed him as an act of love. And Jesus says it's a beautiful thing. Jesus welcomes us in the middle of Holy Week to be devoted to him. Remember, he has just had a few days of great confrontation. 
He's just had a few days of great challenge and great teaching and great beautiful but hard and difficult truths. There's no doubt chatter already amongst many. What are they going to do about this Jesus on the scene? And yet, in the middle of Holy Week, we see this woman still desiring to devote herself and her love to following after Jesus. Jesus, in the middle of this week, calls to us similarly. Will we be devoted to him? Will we give what we have in order to follow him? It says that the, the word of this woman's devotion and love for Jesus, this beautiful act, will be told as far as this word of me is spoken. And here we are in 2021 still speaking about this woman. But in contrast to this great act of devotion, we see Judas. And whether it's not because Judas now sees the way money's being used and his maybe he is in mind thinking about how he would have used the money if it was sold or not. We, we know Judas was in some ways responsible for those things, for the disciples. We see him now going to the chief priests. He had heard the chatter. And now he puts a price tag on Jesus. How much will you give me? And the price is 30 pieces of silver. This wouldn't have been a very, very large sum. It, it would have been maybe the equivalent, they say, today of four months' salary. Um, in the Old Testament law, it's the price that would be paid if a slave was killed by an oxen that gored it to death to the other master. Um, it's not a life-changing sum. In some ways, and in, and actually in, in, in a lot of ways, it's a, it's a meager pittance. But we see Judas in his heart, not desiring to devote himself to the Lord for what he can give, but for what he could get. And here is the juxtaposition in this text of this woman who sees Jesus and asks, what can I give to show my love and devotion? And Judas, who sees Jesus and asks, what can I get? From him for my own benefit even if it's a meager sum in the middle of Holy Week it's it's really the ultimate question that each of us gets to ask every day will we devote our lives daily to what we can give in devotion to Jesus to serving him and to serving others will we see Jesus for what we could grab and take even if it's just a meager pittance. The deception, the sadness, the evil in Judas revealed his heart. He did not adore Jesus. He saw Jesus as a means to an end. And so, for us today, in the middle of this holy week, this is the, the challenge that we wrestle with. Jesus, will I devote myself to you? Or Jesus, will I try to grasp from you? And the amazing paradox of the cross is that Jesus gives of himself in order that we might receive freely. And then he offers us to come and adore him and follow him. But the yoke is easy and the burden is light. Uh, uh, Jesus in Good Friday through the emptying of himself offers us more than we could ever get through any other illicit means. So here we are in the middle of our holy week and the question for us today. Are we devoted to Jesus? Will we follow him and give him our all? Are we in this game just to see what we can get to stuff our own pockets? When Jesus invites us to a much deeper, rich relationship with him, one that he will make possible just a few days from now as we go to the cross. So, Today, devoted or betraying, how might we this very day give all that we have to know, share, and follow Jesus?